What's up, everybody? Prof Sales. And Karen. Coming at you with, I guess, a shoe video, for lack of a better term here. Or lack of a better topic. Um, yes, we are sitting on the floor of our living room with shoes. Lots and lots of shoes. <clears throat> ah, ah, ah. And uh, <clears throat> I don't really know why we decided to do this show on the floor, but we did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> well... Kind of. So, so here we are. So here we are. But anyway, we have all these shoes sitting on our floor. And um, they've been sitting here for a couple days now since we got back on Friday, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And today we've started cleaning and getting them ready. But we thought we would share with you what we found. We don't we don't normally do haul videos, so this is really weird. Um, should I show them the shoes or what do you think? Well, we huh? figured, you know, the shoes have been here and there's nowhere else for them to go. And you know that you're a, um, a reseller when your kid comes home with some friends and their shoes all over the floor and it's business as usual. It's like, okay, they sit down, they play the PS3 or whatever and the shoes and they all coexist and live happily together in the same plane <laughs> of true. existence. That, that did happen, didn't it? It did. So we thought we would talk to you about what we found. Um, I gotta here entertain people. I need to grab something real quick. <laughs> like my cup, it says Bear Slayer. I got that for Ben for Christmas a couple years ago because the first hunting trip he ever went on, he shot a bear. True story. True story. That's setting the bar high for future hunting trips, won't wouldn't you say? Yeah. So I wanted to share with you what we got. So we went shopping, you know, we went up to see my folks on Thursday. And um, yeah, it was, uh, oh, somebody was saying they couldn't see it. Oh, oh, love your cup. All right, we're good. All right, so we went up Thursday to see my folks and we decided to source as we went. And then we also, we sourced their town, their hometown, and then also some more of that on Friday when we left. And then on the way back, we hit some too. So we pulled out 68 pair of shoes between, I don't know, it was like seven or seven or eight, I think it was eight stores. Yeah, and we even went to uh, an outlet. And, on, you know, isn't that always grand to uh, be driving around and you either find a thrift store or, in this case, it was not only a Goodwill, but a, <clears throat> a, an outlet right next door that right. was totally not on our radar. Bonus! And what do we always do? I make us go in, don't I? <laughs> Especially when it's something new. And we sent pictures back um, to a couple of folks, some videos of what it was, and it was just bin, like four bins just full, like overflowing with shoes. And to some, that might be pretty gross. Mm. But to me, it was a challenge. Yeah, we were digging through them, and she kept, she, it was funny because Karn kept, um, Karen kept moving away from the cart, and I could see people eyeing the cart with what we had in. I was like, you got to keep the cart nearby. <laughs> I was like, the cart Nazi. Well, at least I remembered to put my cell phone in my front pocket, which I don't think you even did. Well, that's true. No, mine's always in my front pocket. Oh, is it? Yeah, I All never right. put it in my back So anyway, yeah, I was, I was, you know, <clears throat> diligent about my phone, but not so much about the cart. Anyway, so we bought 68 pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. We bought 11 pair of jeans, just to kind of give you an idea of... Um, the, the ratio, I was trying to show them a little bit um, here. So you can kind of see what we got there. There's some actually over there on the <laughs> That's on the me. couch. There's a bunch, watch the drink. I got the drink. There's a bunch back here. That kind of gives you an idea, right? Oh, and then there's one pair of boots that we talked about at one point that is sequestered. It's actually outside with dryer sheets and some other watch things <laughs> um, because it's stinky. It's got cigarette smoke all over the place. And then I joined it with some rain galoshes that were just mothbally yucky. Yeah. So they're out sunning themselves and decontaminating. Yeah. So 68 pair, we spent on the shoes $274. Actually, 270, almost 275 So it came out to $4.04 4 per pair. Pretty good. Um, we had we got some as low as a dollar thirty. Some of them were five thirty five. It was a mixture, um, so I'm pretty happy with that price point. Aren't you? I think that's pretty cheap. Not I bad. Think, I think we did really well. Yeah. So it all blended together for just over four dollars a pair. 
monster, not just for breakfast anymore. And to give you an idea, 68 pair, that's more than we have listed right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's almost as many as we bought. So we basically doubled our shoe inventory at our, um, <clears throat> in one fell swoop. Um, so anyway, well, let's get started. We'll start looking at something. What do you want to look at first? We can show the peeps. Oh, I thought you were talking about peep toes. I have a shoe vocab <coughs> on the brain right now. Um, do you do want those. me to go? Yeah, you like All right, those. So do those. The first brand I'm going to show you guys just what we bought. This is called MBT. They're basically like walkers with the big thick um, style. Just that they don't look like anything that special. You can see the brand inside MBT. Um, I, I did not know this brand. You can see the bottoms are in really great shape. Not a lot of wear. Whoever had these did not wear them a lot. And they are a size, uh, a size nine, which is an, an okay size, not great size, but okay. So these actually, some of the solds on these are a hundred bucks, believe it or not. I was very surprised. I had not seen this brand before. Um, you got to watch them because there are certain issues they will split on you. Tino was telling me, my good friend Tino. Hi, Tino. There. I see you. <laughs> so a good brand for you to check out, MBT. I think we paid uh, maybe four. I think we actually only paid three dollars for these. These were these were in, back home. So these were three bucks plus tax. So might sell for as much as a hundred. Definitely should sell for probably seventy five. So really good on those. Okay. So um, your turn. My turn. So who knew uh, Sperry Topsiders makes something other than flat boat shoes? Um, <clears throat> absolute perfect condition. Look, aren't they cute? If Lauren's here, I bet she would like them. Um, but they're just a nice, um, what do we call these? These are a... <clears throat> like They're like a mule heel. They're like a loafer, lace-up loafer with heels. Yeah, I really know loafer. it's not a loafer. I'm just saying that's what they look like. But they're delightful. Like a claw um, almost. But... Yep, and they're in perfect shape. <clears throat> Uh, and the comps looked really good on Spaley, Spaley, Sperry girly shoes. So, yeah. So we were happy. Those were, and how much did we pay for those? It's on the bottom. Oh, um, 429. 429 plus tax. Not bad. These were in NC still, by the way. This yeah. is the, the stop that I don't like to go to. Do you want to do these or? <clears throat> we, I'll, I'll demonstrate. Or tell the story. And, and you can start the story. So Jason is over on the other side of the story. The store, store signing me and it's just just annoying me because <laughs> i can't read his so, mind so karen is like six rows across the store she can't really hear me because there's music and people and whatever and i'm going to her i'm going and i had just told him that this employee was totally hawking me and i couldn't shake her like she was right up in my immediate space and i had just told you that and he's like and i'm like Ugh. So I get a little, and I marched right on over to you, and <clears throat> there was a woman, he said, that. She, she asked me what, like she said, they've got the, she came up to me, she, she was probably a reseller of some sort, maybe, and she was saying, uh, you know, they got some great shoes here, and I'm like, yeah, they really do, and she said, uh, there's a pair over there that'll go for like 100 bucks or so. I, I, don't know what, I don't know what she said, maybe she didn't say 100 bucks, she just said they'd go for really good money, and they're brand new or practically new. And I, and I said, oh, I said, I bet Karin, my, I bet Karin would love those. And she said, okay. And she said, and so she walks away. And then I realized she's looking for her. <laughs> and the funny part is, is she's walking down the same aisle Karin's on and Karin's looking and Karin catch, looks over me and catch mine. I'm like, I'm pointing like this, like, you know, trying to tell her because I can't say it because she won't hear it. And I didn't want to yell it. And you know, this goes on for like a minute. These two are like crossing paths with each other and never speaking to each other. It's the funniest thing. All right, Finally, so you came over and said, what are you trying to tell me? Let's just cut to it. So <laughs> we were two women on a mission. I happen to love the brand Merrill. If I could wear Merrill a thousand percent of the time, I would. Great brand. They last forever. And lo and behold, <clears throat> so was this beautiful soul. We were like two ships in the night. And she said, oh, look. And these are like size nine or ten, right? I do not wear a nine or ten, but for the for that conversation, I did. Get closer to so people can Ooh. see them. So anyway, and I we're arguing about whether they're new or not. 
I think they were at a minimum, maybe the try or honor pair, the sample pair, um, but they're brand new and I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell you which ones, <clears throat> but there are a couple brands that I pick up no matter what. Merrill is one of them. Lucky is one of them. I mean, if it has lucky stamped on it, doesn't matter. Um, and they're just beautiful shoes. And she said, oh, you know, they don't fit me. But and so we had a conversation about the merits of Merrill. Yeah. She had a pair on her feet. I probably was not. Oh, I was wearing those borns that gave me blisters. Anyway, so Merrill's love them. Um, <clears throat> these were kind of these are ones you found, right? Oh, are you are you going right to the ones that were the vintage ones? Is yeah, you want to do do you want to do these though? Yeah, or no? Oh yeah, because I am the shoe finder. I am the shoe whisperer, and I am the shoe finder. So Karen brings over these lace up Oxfords to me, <clears throat> and um, asked me about them, and I'm like, they look pretty plain to me. I don't really know, but then I think you started researching them, and then we sent Tino a photo. Um, so like twenty photos. <laughs> Yeah, Tina's like, give me this, give me, send me this number, send me, and we're going, all right, all right. So these are, um, these are town craft. And, they are, and apparently they're a, a JC Penny brand. Discontinued. That, that they don't make anymore. Right. And so this is my noob rube methodology when I'm looking at shoes, right? I usually don't even touch it if it doesn't, if it's not a brand I know, or if it's not leather, like man made, I'm sure don't. <clears throat> attack me here people that there are man-made shoes out there that are awesome but i'm can i see that mm -hmm. i'm drawn to shoes that are um leather made in italy certain things that i've been conditioned or told or taught to look for right and these just had a look about did you show them the inside of the shoe so i tried to it's hard to see these it. are made in brazil yeah that's pretty that's pretty decent right <clears throat> so they're not made here they're made of leather and they just had a look about them they have a wooden bottom they have a rubber heel uh, and I just started looking online and there are some that went for a lot of money like and I went over to Jason and I said you know there's a good chance that these are vintage shoes and they're in amazing shape yeah so <clears throat> Towncraft probably not gonna find a lot of that one necessarily but you, but do. Just, you know be open to they're out there you want to pick another pair and I'm gonna show the pair I have pick another pair I don't know yeah, yeah. Oh, Pick here's some more Merrells. So, um, all right, go ahead. So, Tino, the when we were at the the outlet, um, these little mocks were there. Jungle mocks, I think. They're, anyway, Just a little slip-on loafer. Yeah, but I mean, they look. I would. <clears throat> I don't know that I would wear these fuzzy uh, Merrells or not, but they're pretty sweet. Yeah, and again, the big M Merrell, love them. So we got those, and these were a dollar fifty. <clears throat> these next shoes, um. I really, I really love finding shoes like this next pair, guys, because and I actually have two pairs that are the same brand. Anytime you can find, I've learned in my quick, uh, you know, shoe or my very short shoe selling <laughs> career that anything that's um, unique or like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. like a useful or occupational type shoe or has a specific purpose can be valuable. Yeah, yeah. So this brand. Is called um, P P W minor. And these are like the what do we call this again? The strap across. I always forget. The monk strap. Like a monk. It's kind of like a monk strap, but not really. It's a velcro strap. So but, I'm not gonna, don't, but don't put velcro, don't put velcro, in, velcro your in your listing in the title. title. <laughs> um, and you can see they're pretty much brand new. These shoes are made specifically for people with um, diabetes. And I actually found two pair of them. So there's another pair over here, and these were. Um, they were five bucks each, but it looks like they'll sell for a decent amount. Um, Tino was telling us, you know, make sure you you look to make sure they don't have any crack when you bend them, and, and they don't. They're they're in really good shape. Like I would say, looking at the tread, um, these haven't even really. This one's been worn a little more, but these have obviously not been worn for you know any length of time. So good find. I'm not even sure what I remember these going for. But they were decent, like maybe forty bucks or something like that. Not bad. One of the greatest tips, and I know that Tino got a really good response when he put it out into the reseller universe, but it's one of the most heartbreaking things you can do in the field or in the wild, if you will, but you have to test those rubber bottoms on those shoes because you don't want to get them home and then they crack and you can't sell them. 
Um, and we, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times already that I've come back to you and, and been like, oh, look, I found these great whatevers and then gone Wah, and then they just crumble. So it's hard. I know it. But you've got to do your due diligence, your quality control as much as possible before you spend your money right. because it's not going to do you any good. Um, another <clears throat> brand that I love is Lauren, Ralph Lauren, and these are just some nice girly shoes. And see, you don't really have a point of reference for girl shoes. What so do you this mean? is going to be. Like, I know girls wear them. And that's about it. Yeah. So, um, you know, use what you know, women especially. No offense to guys if you know your women's shoes, right? Um, but I know what I like. I know what. Um, it, well, anyway, they're lovely. So we picked up these two. Um, here's a little. Um, Cole Hahn, little peep toe. That's just adorable. <laughs> um, this next pair is, and I think I've talked about these before. These are, did you find these or me? I can't remember. Oh, probably me. These are another pair of shape ups from Skechers with, with a big thick heel. I am really digging these, uh, these, uh, shape up type shoes. And cause again, guys, this is like a little niche type of shoe like i think there's other people who make them besides sketchers not maybe not shape ups i don't know that's probably their their specific model what that's their trademark but there's other types that are made like this with the extra heel like i showed you the uh the mbt earlier but there's there's a group of people out there who love shoes like this guys and you know what happens is they buy them somewhere and then they wear them out and then they need to look for them again they don't remember where they bought them necessarily or they can't find them and then that's where you come in as a reseller and you know provide them with you know what they're looking for so um these are in great shape they got a little more uh, not a lot of wear but definitely some dirt on the bottom to clean off but um these should probably be a, be a these are a size 10 so they should be a decent sell shouldn't have any problem and for the more domineering these are dangerous <laughs> these Ooh. will hurt you i am not kidding these maybe that's the point these points will draw blood. <laughs> that is not an exaggeration. So the brand is, can you guess? I bet you can't. I really bet you can't. So we bought these because we actually had another pair that sold, right? Uh, Lane Bryant. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. So Lane Bryant for days. They're, um, they're in great shape. So we got them. <laughs> Gina said careful. I know, right? Yeah, I know, right? But I mean, they're perfect. And we're, um, you know, always be on the lookout for something, like you said, that's different, right? Right. Or if there's... um, I'm going over here to find another pair. <laughs> like you have to move to find another pair? Well, we're surrounded. There was a pair I wanted to find. Okay. Here, you might want these. You can even switch sides if you want. <laughs> okay. You just, Did I just flash everybody? Just, so not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I don't know how what they'll go for, but uh, this is a, a whatever a deal breaker, a non negotiable. So again, Lucky Brand. These are some <clears throat> ballet flats. Um, I just love them. If they were my size, I would own them. What about those? Or oh yeah, this I is something these new. Cool too. These are nurtures. They're not bad. We did well with some um, nurture sandals too. I think. So this is a brand that we kind of are on the look lookout for, um, but we're we're purposefully buying shoes that we don't have to put a lot of work into. Um, and here's two. I'll show you two other. And this one I found the exact comp on. Um, this one was three ninety nine. I think it's Sam Edelman. It's just a little slip on wedge flip floppage gorgeousness. Um, but this exact shoe I found that sold for, um, so our targets are, we're looking for price points that are going to be 30 or higher, although it's 25 <coughs> or higher because of the lower average. So they have to go for at least $25, the, the sell price, sale price. So these, I think were higher than that, but that's a good one. And then I got these, this speaks to sometimes you just have to take a risk, right? So this particular brand, Donald J. Pliner. Um, I could not find this exact shoe, uh, but there are some vintage versions and some beaded versions. Uh, this shoe, it's leather. It has this beadwork on it. It's got a lot of weight to it. So this was a risk that I took 
you don't know about it, but now you do. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to give this a try because it's a great shoe and there were comps that were similar with bright, bright colors and things, um, but they were in, again, great shape and it's not a cheap shoe. So I'm going to show this one. Please do. So I had started, um, I had started pulling a brand called, oh, where is that one? Earth. No, it's that one. This one? Earth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. So um, I'd started pulling these shoes called Earth Shoes. There they are. But, but, <laughs> um, wah, wah. they were not actually the ones I actually wanted. So, again, I was talking with our, our good friend Tino. And so it's actually a brand called, it is called, it's just called Earth. It's not called Earth Shoes. So you can see these nice little um, lace up. They're almost like a, you know what these remind me of? Do you what? remember the old hush puppies that were like ankle boots? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what these remind me of. I mean, they're not made the same. They've got this mesh on the side and so on. What are those called? But the mon monks or mocks? No, or? I don't know exactly what they're called. I don't know if you can see the, funny word. the brand name inside there. It's kind of hard to see it with enough light. But um, these, these shoes actually have a nice little following. They're called Earth, just Earth, Earth. And um, we found actually another pair wait, of them but too. But wait, there's more. And they weren't at the same. These were five. These were four. No, five. this one's called Vegan. They're both vegan. These are both vegans. And um, you can see, I mean, they're nothing that fancy, oh, yeah, guys. But, it. you know, it's like anything else with reselling. When you find the, uh, the niche brands, there's people who like them. And they're just going to buy them, you know, ongoing. And the problem is, you know, anytime you're selling one that's um, pre-owned like this, you know, people can get them for a discount from you, or if they bought them new, they'd be, you know, quite a bit of money. And I think that's what you benefit when you really start um, finding these niche brands and shoes. I know that works in jeans. I would think it probably works in shoes as well because shoes are something kind of interesting. You know, I started thinking about it. It's like you've got them on your feet maybe all day in a lot of cases. Like they've got to, they've got to fit. They got to feel good. They got to look right for you. They got to be functional, maybe. So when people get a shoe brand they like, they tend to stick with it, I think, a lot of times, which is to your your advantage. I think we're um, kind of leaving it. Like, we had some home runs. Did we already go? Well, some of those we said oh, were home runs. What else were you looking at? Oh, those mini Tonkas were cool. I think I got those because I like them. Which ones? Those funny ones right there. So not the highest. Those are one. almost ready to go. They well, no, they're, they're like brand new. Yeah. Um, but mini Tonka, they don't resell as high. Um, but they do have a following and these, I used to buy a pair of mini Tonka sandals every year with the little, the conchos on them and, and these are in perfect shape. So those are nice. Not, you know, out of the park, maybe it's a single or a double if we're talking in baseball terms. Um, but again, they're, you know, we're, we're looking for certain brands, but then we're also looking for certain looks. Um, and this, they, these were pristine. So we went ahead and, and grabbed them. Like these, didn't you? Those are the, are they the Sperry's again? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm Sperry for days. Yeah, another pair of Sperry's. Um, these are not like the super high-end boat shoes. I mean, they are boat shoes, I think, technically, but um, they're really cool looking. Just anytime you have like a different look like this, guys, a lot of times that'll be valuable um, just because, and you're going to get great keywords on this too because I'm going to put Sperry Topsider in it because that's what they are. They're Sperry Topsider. So... You're going to get anybody looking for those, and they see those, they're like, oh, those are different. I don't have a pair that looks like those, and there you go. You get a sale. Grab your um, sasses and grab those. Please. Yep, and grab those too, that one and that one, Selby. So there are also brands that we're on the lookout for, but there are a lot – how do I say this? There are a lot of brands, just like jeans, that it's the model that you're looking for, not necessarily the make or the brand, right? So SAS, S-A-S. Uh, is on our list, but not every pair of SAS shoes. Right, right. Um, and a couple of the stores that we went into, let's say the demographic that might live nearby or donate to said store or shop regularly at said store uh, might be a little, I don't know, a little older than we are or their taste may be a little different. I don't know how to word this better, but <clears throat> this particular shoe is not, you know, mainstream everybody's wearing it right but it's a pretty sweet walking shoe man i hope i didn't stumble over that too much um so sas <laughs> sas uh brand wise is not bad um but not all of them are going to have a higher resale like this particular shoe it wasn't bad they also make one in a um 
uh, ostrich print or it's uh, when the when it, the leather has a texture to it right, right. Um, that actually does a little bit better um, but sass we kind of it's it's hot or cold right yeah yeah so it's either good or, or it's not so we had an opportunity to buy more of those we just didn't Selby s-e-l-b-y is also probably a let's say a more mature taste um, and not all of the Selby's s-e-l-b-y are going to do well, right? Just the plain shoes actually sell down there with Morona um, as far as lower prices um, that we found. But we did find a couple. So horse bit, another shoe term when you have this little thing here. Um, and that's easy for me to remember. Grew up with horses, so I can retain that. Um, but this was a Selby that I, I grabbed just because of this right here. Um, I think that that's worth a, worth a shot. This particular beaded pair, oh yeah, yeah, so this one, again, Selby, not the highest home runner hitters, um, but this particular shoe, I found the exact shoe that's sold for like 30 or 35 or something like that, so right. I had to get them, and they're in perfect shape, and they're beautiful. They're, um, again, leather, uh, beaded, and, it's, and they're pristine. There aren't any beads missing or anything like that, so... This pair is um, one of my favorite pair. One of, one of the best pair of sandals I ever had, because I like to wear sandals, believe it or not. Men's sandals, let's be clear. Uh, <laughs> it's Clark's. And this pair of Clark's, just these lace-up loafers with kind of this athletic, not athletic, but this rubber bottom. You can see these are in great shape on the bottom and really great shape on the top. The only issue I have is some scuffing here on the, on the sole. And I think maybe we can polish that up but these are like a nice heavy shoe. Um, these are a size nine and a half. And Clark's has a really good name in shoes. They, they, tend to, they tend to hold some decent resale value, it seems like, in men's or women's. Anytime I see a pair of Clark's in a store, I always pick it up, at least look to see if it's worth, you know, gonna be worth reselling. And probably eight times out of 10, we end up, you know, getting the shoe, assuming it's in good condition. And I think these will these will fetch a good price just mainly because they're in such great shape, other than the the toe, which I think we can fix. Are those Clarks? Yep. So we had this other pair of Clarks that were really really good, um, but what happened to those? Do you remember? No. The loafers, the the lace up. Ben took them. So oh, my yeah. so my son shopped our shoe haul before we even did anything with them and snagged a pair of shoes before we even had time to yes yes do anything. Um. This one, another gamble of sorts, um, and I want to look this one up. Tino, you might know better on this one, but it's Gabor, and the comps uh, that I pulled on it um, were pretty decent. The shoe itself is just a square toe. I might have sent this one to you. I can't remember, um, but sw square toe, slip-on, not bad, and it's got a bit of a, a heel as well. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's got some weight to it, so that one was nice. Johnston and Murphy, not the highest end. Slip on, oh. um, but they were in great shape, so we pulled a pair of those too. Yeah, I have this mystery pair I found, guys. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, I didn't know what those were. Yeah, these are, when I first saw them, I thought they might be Allen Edmonds. <laughs> and then when as I looked at them closer, and you can't read in the heel what they are, but, um, they, they're really heavy, nice, thick shoe. They might be floor shine or it's, it's hard to say what they are. They've got some model numbers inside, so I'm sure I can probably find those if I dig around a little. But, you know, I was like, you know what? They're a good shoe. They're in pretty good shape. Just need a little bit of cleaning. And um, they've got all the size info and so on. If I can just figure out the brand, I'm good to go. Nice wingtips, which are always a popular style. Like, they're kind of timeless. So I decided we'd take a risk on them. I mean... Gosh, they're heavy, man. They feel like they weigh like three pounds. Do they? Here, let me try. Let oh, me try. oh. oh. <laughs> you see what I did there? I did. Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> did you pull the the? These were the only Nayots, right? I think so. Um, so that's Nayot N A O T. That is a pretty good company. I don't know. Uh, and boot wise, right? Cowgirl boots. Um, I don't know if these are going to be at the top of the food chain or not, but it's just a nice little leather slip on so something different <clears throat> caught our eye what were those fuzzy ones and why did these I get are those? Uh, bass yeah so a little fuzzy bass huh I don't think a bass can be fuzzy. I don't think 
I feel like bass don't have fur. No, they don't. That's the quote of the so day. So what else do you want to show in this non- I don't know. That's a, that was a pretty good haul. Non-haul-like video. Oh, here's some more sasses. <laughs> She's funny. So we had um, 68 <laughs> pair guys, and, you know, I've just started collecting shoe data. I'm going to turn this this way a little bit. I can't see myself. So I just started collecting shoe data, and I don't know if the numbers I have will hold up or not, but right now, if they do, this will end up being, you know, a profit of like 13 maybe $1,350, um, which is not bad for 36 hours we accumulated these over, maybe, something like that. Oh, oh, because it's times two? Well, we went into two days. We started on Thursday. Right, but you can't, went into you Friday. can't count that we slept. You're gonna no, no, no. I'm anyway. just saying the time from when we the time from when we started to when we ended. Oh, I do know one thing. What? Um, we did get our first shoe feedback. Yep, and it was good. It was awesome. Do you remember what it said? It's like, yay. They were great shape, uh, awesome condition. It was really nice. Yeah, it was good. So. Good feedback. Um, so uh somebody asked how much we spent. We spent $274. Um so anywhere from, they were about just over four dollars a piece on average um, for these sixty-eight. You know, there's no guarantees, but I've been talking, you know, with other shoe sellers, and you know, the shoe the shoe market's going to be slow in the summer as well to some degree, but maybe not as much as the jean market. So we're kind of hedging our bets here, guys, with you know a lot of jeans, some other tchotchke clothing items we have left, and then shoes. So we're thinking, you know. We probably need to pull this this amount maybe twice a month to start. Um, remember, I remember what I said our goal was, and you were like, "That's too aggressive." The five hundred goal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her I was like, "Hey, you think we could be at five hundred listings of shoes by the end of July?" And she's like, "No." <laughs> well, I I mean, said, How about August? <laughs> we could, and I mean, give us some credit. So the shoe game is new to us, right? And I understand that we've done some videos before this on inventory, um, and man, that is a, apparently a hot, debatable topic, right? So how we have it currently is not how we're going to continue to stack and store our, our shoes. Oh, we, yeah, I need to talk about that, too. <clears throat> yeah, well, what better time than the present, right? There's a couple of things that are going to change. We get that. We can't continue to stack them the way we're stacking them. I get that maybe they're going to fall over one day and crush me. Yeah. It might happen. Somebody said it could happen. They don't weigh that much. Um, another thing we're thinking about changing is um, storing them in open air because putting them in a bag actually encourages moisture yep. and mold to grow. Wah, wah. And um, I know from other, uh, uh, you know, with horses and horse leather and, and mold is just, it's not fun. And we'd have to clean the shoes all over again. So right. we get that it's a great idea that we're saving a step. But I mean, people, we're new at this too, at different parts of our business. So it's trial and error. And we joke all the time that we're happy to be the guinea pigs for everybody. Um, but we get it. We're going to set out there and some of us are going to go more headstrong than others. The, <laughs> so one of the morals of the story there is, guys, because I was doing some reading on this, wrapping your shoes up in plastic saran wrap or putting them in a Ziploc bag, that could be a bad move. Because if mold is already in there, which it probably is. And you wouldn't know it to see it. Yeah, you can't Because you can't see it. Right. It's tiny, uh, microscopic. It You're encouraging growth in there by not having fresh air moving through that item. Mm -hmm. um, and you could pull the shoes out, especially with leather. You could If they sat there for a few months, you could see some mold grow on them. So I would not recommend putting them in bags or saran wrap or anything like that. I, I wanted to do that at first. I'm like, that makes a lot of sense to me. We can just slide them in there. They'll be easy to store. They won't take up as much room. They'll stay together. And then I started reading that and I went, oh, huh, that's not going to work. So I think the best solution is probably just to have a shoe rack like we've had, you know, just a good old shoe rack because you can go so high on it. I mean, you can go up, you know, 10 rows, 12 rows, maybe. We found like a 10 rack, a 10 row one, right? Yeah. I think we found a 12. So you got ways that you can, you know, just take that, take them higher and take them vertical. And that way you don't have to worry about if you're going to get mold on them. Of course, it depends on where you store them. Like if you store them out, out in the building outside in the dark and. 
Well, and right now our plan is we're going to put them in the garage and we're going to get these racks and we're going to get a bunch of them. I mean, that was always the plan. Yeah. It's just now that we've bought 70 shoes and we have nowhere to put them, we're going to have to get that plan. Yeah, we're, al we're already between those and these. <laughs> we're already up over 100. Yeah, so. So it's it's getting, you know, it's getting to the point where you have to have a better plan for them. Mm -hmm. um, the tricky part with shoes, though, is, is boots because boots – Sometimes we'll kind of flop over like those, but other times they stand up straight. They're cowboy boots, and they take up a lot of vertical room. So you all you got to think about if you're using shoe racks, boots have to go on the top mm -hmm. potentially because they might stand up taller and they won't fit down in the lower ones. I guess you could angle them down, maybe I don't know, like angle them backwards. Well, or just have a different thing for boots. Right, you could do that too. Um, and I will say this, and I'm gonna tell on you a little bit. So whenever you try something new, um, cut yourself some slack, show yourself some grace. Um, I think that with shoes, it's a new thing for us. Would you, would you agree with yeah. that? Oh, definitely. Um, and there's no way, like if you're a baseball card reseller and you all of a sudden want to sell jeans, you can't possibly realistically think you're going to just jump into jeans and know everything about everything. Just like, you know, we're not going to be able to do put the same comfort, knowledge, et cetera, into the shoes that we have the jeans. It's a, it's a huge learning curve. So it's yeah. like you're having to start over. And I think it's easy to get frustrated if you go into something new thinking you're just, you're going to have it, you're going to nail it. Yeah. It's no uh, slight on you. It's just, it is what it is. You're not going to know everything about everything right out of the gate. So, uh, you know, try to remember I mean, if you're new at this, then it's a learning curve all by itself. But if you're new at this compared to old at something similar, try to remember what it was like when you first started. And yeah. you've got to learn it. You've got to. And I think it's easy to, you know, fall into uh, fall into a trap. I think you make mistakes if you're right. not going to apply the same devotion, diligence, time, and effort into learning something new, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. And I think to your point, it's not even that you don't know the brands or what to buy or what to, or how to sell it. When you start, it's the things like this. It's like, how do you store it? How do you mm -hmm. label it? How do you list it correctly? What, you know, it's all these other things that are around and not just the what it's the how. Well, and shoes require what you're learning <laughs> is that shoes require a lot more attention than jeans do. There is just no, shame. I mean, it's just not going to happen. People wear shoes. They get gum on the bottom. Um, they get stinky on the inside. There's, you know, a water spot here, a suede scuff there. Yeah. And jeans primarily, you know, what do you got to do? You got to snip a thread here, take off a cuff, They're easy. a cuff there. They're a lot easier. Right. So, I mean. Relatively, but some people would hate that part. Mm -hmm. Or they'd be like, oh, I don't know. Is that really a spot or is that supposed to be there? I mean, there'd be people who would, you know, look at that and say. Or that distressing, is it really a rip in the knee or is mm -hmm. it supposed to be there? Get me started. But anyway. All right. Um, you got anything else? I always have something else, but <laughs> I think we're running out of time. All right. So we're like at 40 minutes, guys. We were trying to keep us to 30. But as you can see, with 68 pair of shoes, brand new, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, so we, um, we wanted to shake it up a little bit, do a non characteristic shoe. Haul. I know this is like a <laughs> haul video and I don't and ever do it. And it was all his idea too, right? <laughs> it's terrible. It's like, I'm out of ideas for video topics. So let's do a haul video. That's bad. Isn't no, it? I mean, I think this is good. And, and we'll, um, you know, we're not pretending to be something that we're not. So right, we're right. learning something new and we want to share that with you. And hopefully right. if, <laughs> and I know this sounds maybe a little counterintuitive, but I mean it in the most supportive way. If our mistakes are public, very public mistakes can save you guys some hassle somewhere down the road, yeah. then so be it. Then victory, victory for, for this time that we spent, right? Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So look, that's going to do it for this video. Um, leave us some questions and comments down below. Let us know how your sales are going and how your stores are doing. Maybe if you've gotten in some new, maybe the shoes, maybe something totally different. We'd like to hear from you. What else should they do, Karn? Oh, if they, somebody asked me to do it in, in Oliver last time. So if you like what you see, sir, could you please press the like button? Some more, please. That was my best, Oliver. I could do more. 
who will buy these red, red roses. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, um, so. In, my, in my other life, I was an orphan in London. No, I digress. So we've got a couple more 10 of 10s really cool coming up this week, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm going to do a very rudimentary spreadsheet form tomorrow. And then on Thursday, it'll be all about taking pictures. So I'm, I don't know if I can keep that within 10 minutes, prof. I just don't know if I, I have can to do it. a little longer. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for now. So we'll see you guys tomorrow morning, I guess at 10. Yes, at 10. And so thank you all for coming. Hope that you guys kill it this week and have an awesome go of it, no matter where you are or what you're doing. And as always, this is Karen and Prof Sales saying good, good sales, sales to you. you.